Expo 2020 is now just one year away. The size of the project is something that has never been undertaken in the UAE before. While the site is rapidly being constructed, there is also so much happening around marketing, sponsorship, ticketing and the retail offering. That is the remit of Sanjeev Kosla, the Chief Commercial Officer. He joins us to shed more light on how preparation is going. Welcome to Dubai Works, the business podcast about the innovators, the products, the services, and trending topics. Love and Dubai's take on the business stories that matter. My name is Richard Fitzgerald. I'm the founder of Augustus Media, publishers of Love and Dubai, Love and Saudi, and Smashy TV. Each week, we'll be interviewing the dynamic business leaders of Dubai. Good morning, Sanjeev. Good morning. Welcome to Dubai Works, and uh, thanks for coming on. So we're at the expo head office. Can you tell us about your role here? So uh, firstly, welcome and uh, Thank thanks you. for having me on the show. So I'm Chief Commercial Officer for Expo 2020. What that really means is that uh, I'm responsible for the various partnerships that we have uh, in place uh, who are supporting the delivery of the event. I'm also responsible for marketing uh, the event uh, to uh, different audiences and uh, also uh, responsible for converting uh, this into ticketing. Uh, so already responsible for ticket sales mm. also. So a fairly broad uh, spectrum of responsibilities. I'm also responsible for the on-site uh, uh, and off-site licensing and retail in terms of our merchandising and any uh, Expo 2020, if you may, branded products uh, which may come out. Well, um, there seems to be a lot there. And Expo 2020, is a new an, a new initiative, a new entity. What could people relate to? Is that like a commercial officer role at a, at a, a, a different type of a, a company, or is there more to? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what did you know when you were starting that you know what it was and what's expected? So no, I jo <laughs> I joined the organization about two years back. So uh, I've been in Dubai for for now close to 18 years. Wow. Uh, when I came in here, I was actually doing, and my background is largely strategy, but uh, when I came in here, I was focusing on research and analytics, mm. uh, which is really around the visitor. And one thing led to another, and uh, you know, I just acquired some additional responsibilities, so now it's a fairly broad spectrum. Yeah. Typically in the organization, uh, you would have uh, a commercial officer would combine uh, marketing and revenue together. I mean, you sometimes know that as chief sales and marketing officer. Out yeah. here, we call it chief commercial officer. So it's not an unusual combination. Okay. And when you describe the expo to people, Expo 2020 in Dubai, how do you describe it? <laughs> it's yeah, really difficult. No, it's not difficult at all. Uh, you know, I actually think, I mean, it's very simple as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Expo 2020 is the oldest mega event in the modern world. It's mm. older than the Olympics also. Uh, it is uh, the greatest celebration uh, of uh, human brilliance and achievement. Uh, uh, it ha it's held every five years. It was held for the first time in 1851 in London. So it has a very, very proud heritage. Uh, we think of Expo 2020 as the greatest show. Uh, it will be the greatest show. We have something incredible that we're putting together, and we think that uh, that's going to be something amazing for for everybody. Uh, so it's going to be across 173 days, uh, starting October 2020, uh, goes on to April 10, 2021. Uh, 173 days, 192 countries participating. The biggest expo that's ever happened in terms of country participation. Uh, we will have uh, close to 60 different events that happen on site and mm -hmm. these events can be any way from talks like this, you know, from having uh, uh, conversations between uh, which are curated to all the way being uh, A-lister musical performances to dance performances to uh, theatre shows, uh, you name it. When you say it's the biggest uh, in terms of participants in countries, is there a reason, have they been attracted to Dubai or is it, is it you know, the whole initiative is that has led to being the biggest or has this been part of the proposal and part of the agenda from the start? So uh, it has been part of the agenda from the start, right? Uh, when Dubai uh, UAE pitched to do this event, uh, you know, I mean, you've, you've stayed here for some time, right? Uh, 
UAE does not uh, take out measures when they when they put forward something. We obviously wanted to do something that was going to be uh, really had never been done before. Mm. Uh, so it was our promise to uh, do uh, to have the maximum ever repre representation of countries, and we reached out to all the countries. And I think countries also see uh, uh, UAE as occupying a unique position. Mm. Uh, we have a fantastic track record in whatever we do. Uh, we have uh, the connectivity to deliver that scale of an event. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is the first time that such an event has happened in the Miyasa region also. Mm. So three billion people have actually never ha had the ability to That's access nice. yeah. uh, an Expo 2020. And this is a three billion market which is young, which is growing, which is the new world. Mm. So uh, whether you are uh, a Western country which wants to access these markets or this population uh, or uh, uh, you know, talk to these people, or whether you are one of the countries in this region which wants to showcase the best of what you have, this Dubai is the, is the platform. Uh, Expo 2020 is the platform. Uh, we recently uh, spoke to the CEO of Splash Fashions and they've come up with a collaboration um, that, you know, for the Expo, a special range. And I'm sure that's part of many, many collaborations that you're overseeing. What goes involved in selecting partners and um, how much, you know, what, what, what's going to be available to us from a retail point of view? Sure. I mean, we have different types of partners that we work with. Uh, so obviously, there are partners who are uh, supporting us in the delivery, if you may, of the event itself. So, uh, uh, and this could be in, in different forms of contribution. A good example would be, say, Emirates Airlines, Ether Salat. These are all our partners, and they're involved in helping us execute and deliver this event. Mm. Uh, at the same time, we also have, uh, as you mentioned, uh, um, licensing and merchandising uh, partners. Uh, Splash is a good example. Mm. Uh, uh, we, But it's not just limited to that. We are looking at f a very, very full, diverse product range, uh, typical to what you would see uh, in, in mega events, but also some new and interesting product categories, which you don't uh, always see, uh, but ranging all the way from uh, kids' toys to your usual magnets and souvenirs and those kinds of things, mm -hmm. and going all the way till uh, fashion, uh, if you may, uh, and uh, even uh, edible products. Mm. So there's a whole range out there. Uh, this tends to be a fairly uh, uh, competitive and intense pr uh, process. A lot of companies are interested in associating their brands with us, working with us, because and it that creativity in them as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and we push them because mm -hmm. we want, we don't want the product line to look like anything which is, uh, you know, you would just get off the shelf somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, a, uh, a team which develops very detailed style guides for all the product lines that we want them to sure. actually work with. So we give them, uh, and we've done a lot of that work, and we give it to them, and then they use that and transform it uh, into their products. And from, you know, from a retail point of view, and you mentioned ticketing, is there a revenue objective or target, or is it more t as part of the bigger goal to make it a successful event? Uh, it's both. It's both. Look, at the uh, we uh, we are uh, very focused on making it a huge and successful event, and the primary objective of that is driving visitation. Mm. Uh, so, achieving twenty five million visits over the six month period is definitely the number one objective. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this is uh, a project that needs to generate uh, or uh, over a period of time a return or a benefit for the economy. Exactly. Uh, and uh, we, in fact, published uh, very recently uh, an independent uh, report uh, through ENY uh, on the economic impact of Expo 2020, which uh, showed that Expo 2020 will generate uh, about 122 billion of uh, for, uh, which will go into the economy. Now, this is spread over a period of time. Uh, some dollars or dirhams? Dirhams. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so about 50% of it is uh, the run-up to the event and during the event, and then 50% of it is approximately post the event, uh, and that's also cool. In what parts of the economy, obviously tourism and contracts and retail, are there other parts of the economy, is it a wider benefit? Sure, so absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there's, uh, uh, 
if you look at the whole entertainment and event organization, mm. uh, that is going to benefit in a big way. Uh, because if you're delivering 60 events a day, uh, we're not going to ha hire a whole large army of people. We're actually going to work with the industry out here. They're great event organizers, which are already there, and we've, uh, we're working with them to deliver these events. Uh, that's one example. Mm -hmm. um, if you take another example, is we're targeting out of the 25 million visits, 70% uh, of the visitors uh, will come internationally. That's a huge uplift okay. to the whole tour, uh, to the hotel uh, industry, yeah. the F and B industry. We have close to 200 F and B restaurants, which we are contracting and bringing onto site. The countries themselves, uh, a lot of them who are building their own pavilions, will also have restaurants inside them. Mm -hmm. So that's a big uplift for the F and B industry. So it's, uh, of course, the construction industry gets the biggest uplift from given what you see out here in terms of the structures, the infrastructure that's going around. Uh, so it's quite spread out, but I think uh, you know there are other sectors also that that strongly benefit. Yeah, I want to ask, move on to the marketing side of things and sharing sure. the story of the expo. Before I ask about Expo 2020's plans, but recently we saw, uh, you know, this is the first time, as you mentioned, that an event of this magnitude is in the region. Uh, in other markets, brands can associate with World Cups when they happen and FIFA World Cups and other tournaments. We see the Rugby World Cup is in Japan soon and uh, the Olympics. And th there was some recent news about how well the next Olympics have done from a sponsorship point of view. Uh, we, we know of the major partners that Expo has on, on board, the likes of uh, DP World, MasterCard, Nissan. We see it already, uh, you know, uh, announced and pushing that forward. What goes, you know, what in, is involved in that sort of partnership? It, the top line? Okay. Uh, look, I mean, we, we right at the outset itself, uh, we had a partnership framework that we developed. We identified the areas where we could work uh, with, where we, we thought we needed the help of specific partners with specific expertise who, do, who could come in and deliver uh, the event. So we typically go through a planning process where we identify what those areas are and then we identify who are the partners we actually want to approach. Uh, that is uh, done through a competitive process where we actually go out, we do a roadshow, we pitch to them, and we say, guys, look, this is what we are there, this is the benefits we're going to offer, mm. uh, and uh, would you be interested in taking part? And they then submit uh, uh, bids, if you may, to us, and we evaluate that, and we select which is the best one to go ahead with. Yeah. Uh, obviously, for national, uh, if you may, champions such as Emirates and Etisalat, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's almost a no-brainer because there's a prestige to be actually affiliated with these. Uh, for the others, uh, also a lot of the, uh, a lot of them are looking at penetrating this market or uh, offering the ability to uh, to offer their services to the countries who are going to be participating. So it tends to be a very uh, smooth process for us, uh, and, and that's, that's how we go. Once that they're on board, we then have uh, different teams which are responsible for working with the partners to actually deliver what are the services that we uh, envisage in the original scope of the, of the, of the partnership. Uh, so we have a technology team which works with Accenture, with SAP, with Siemens, which are all our technology and, and uh, the Salat, yeah. to help deliver everything which is, of, uh, which is happening, whether it's the infrastructure below the ground or it is the services uh, or the app or any other kind of thing that you would land up seeing. Uh, very interesting. Uh, yeah, and you know, from you mentioned the app and the different things that uh, you know, Expo will have as part of its digital assets. We've also seen some really exciting marketing campaigns featuring the brand ambassador, you know, Messi, and a, a really nice kind of brand campaign as well. Um, what's the kind of general plan around marketing pre-event, and you know, what 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 else should we expect to see? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, this is this is this is probably uh, this is probably uh, you know, it's obviously one of the fun parts to actually work with. You get to work with some. Uh, I have a great team uh, which is working on these campaigns and coming up with these ideas and mm -hmm. uh, rolling them out. Uh, so the, yeah, it's, 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 it's awesome fun. Um, we are uh, currently in the process of continuing to build awareness. We will have uh, a new campaign which will be rolled out very soon, which will be, uh, again, dialing up, if you may, the excitement. Mm. 
Online with one year to go, maybe? Yes, so. around one year to go. Uh, so we should, uh, we'll do a campaign out there. And then around six months before we uh, open gates, we will do another uh, very big campaign. And that ca campaign will be focused more on conversion and ticket sales, because mm -hmm. that's when we really start for, uh, bringing in the ticket sales and start launching the B2C kind of uh, ticket, uh, uh, ticketing effort. Uh, so these are the two really big campaigns, but uh, at the same time, we will be uh, also working with, we, uh, we will also do smaller or always on kind of campaigns that will happen, uh, which become, uh, which are more about right now, more about uh, what is uh, the promise that we're delivering and what is it that you, uh, you should expect to see. But as you get towards event time, they become far more tactical and mm -hmm. promotional in nature. Um, so, uh, yeah, we have a full detailed plan on, on rolling that out. Um, so, yeah, um, it should be quite exciting. Interesting. So, last question. And, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of part of what Expo is going to leave behind is a legacy for, for Dubai and the city and, you know, everyone who, who visits. For another part of legacy is the impact of hosting such big events in the region. Do you see that this could be a benchmark? And, um, you know, personally, uh, you, you know, the effort and the team and the size of the space, um, can you look beyond the expo personally? And, you know, is, is there anything going to be as big as this <laughs> next? Yeah, uh, look, I mean, UAE uh, always will push itself to do something uh, bigger and better, uh, okay. that, right? Uh, what the next, I mean, uh, it is one of the biggest benefits of doing such an event, and that was one of the things that actually attracted me to, to join the organization, was that we would be setting a benchmark of mega events in this part of the world, actually globally, I believe. Uh, and the knowledge and the expertise that the country will be able to retain will become something that can be easily transposed to doing the next mega event which may not be a, an expo, but could easily be a World Cup or an Olympic Games or something similar in that yeah. sense. Uh, I think uh, time will tell, uh, you know, what is it the, the, the next uh, uh, aspiration that UAE aims for. Uh, but absolutely, I mean, there's, this is something that we're very focused on in terms of actually maintaining that legacy of the information. So we actually already have people who are focused on that, who are collecting this information, making sure that it's available so that even on uh, April 11th, if we all walk away after having closed the gates, that uh, knowledge and that intelligence is retained so that it can be easily transposed and transferred to, to another, the next thing. to the next big thing. Amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. That's a great note to end it on. Thank you very much, Sanjeev, for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show again. Yeah.